Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little disassembly on the Benchmade 945-2 and we're going to do a little upgrade to the lubrication inside. This of course is the Mini Osborne 945-2 from Benchmade. This has the beautiful blue accents, the carbon fiber scales, and of course the S90V blade. So pretty cool overall, but I wanted to get a little bit of better action out of it. I think the pivot's a little tight, as you can see. Um, I think, you know, most people, and I don't know if this is true about you as well, but I think a lot of people go ahead and take apart their knives, clean them. Uh, sometimes I even polish the washers. This is riding on washers. So let's go ahead and get into it. We got some tools for the, the day today on this video. We got the Slick Em All from OCD Free DC. Check it out, link in the description. That's gonna be our awesome lubrication we're gonna put in there. We have the Journey Tool Co. REC exclusive um, anodized aluminum bit driver. We got a couple Weeha bits. We got the T6 and the T10. That'll be uh, T10 for the pivot, and of course, the T6 for the body screws. We have some Loctite when we put it all back together. Make sure those screws are not gonna go anywhere. And then of course, we have our tool from Flytanium today, the um, pivot alignment tool. And it goes in there, helps keep things together. When you put it back together, and of course we have some alcohol prep pads so we can get those washers and everything cleaned up. So we'll go ahead and start taking this apart. And you know, this is something that Benchmade's slowly changing their policies on, um, which is great to see. And hopefully we get to see that um, full circle. And in the future, this won't be a huge problem. Sometimes this does void the warranty. Sometimes it doesn't. They do have a form on their website now. And if you do put aftermarket scales on there, um, for sending it in for service. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, this right here, uh, I was super excited to see it. Glad I was able to pick one up. This is great. Of course, I like to keep it all organized. We're taking those body screws out. These of course are the liner body screws. These are the two barrel spacers, stands off, standoffs. And then of course you have your pivot alignment, pivot, pivot alignment. You have your pivot up there. So we'll get that out last. We'll keep everything together and kind of go from there. But one of the things I like to do, especially when we have this all going, because, you know, after they build it, after they put Loctite on, sometimes that Loctite might drip down, get into the pivot area, or maybe even against the blade, and it just makes things a little bit sticky. Um, and so we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go ahead and fix that today. And it could have been a quick adjustment, maybe add a little blue lube, or your favorite KPL or those kind of things to the um, pivot without taking it apart. But I figured, why not? We'll do a disassembly video on it. Um, this is your mini split arrow pocket clip. So we'll keep that together, put those screws off to the side. Just wanna make sure those are not interchangeable with those. And so you can see overall, we got all the screws out on this side. So we'll go ahead and work on this side. Of course, these the ones for the liners always seem to be a little more um, lock tight it in and it doesn't really matter what model uh, from what I've experienced so I try to take the liner ones out first on each side just to loosen them and get them out of there because as you can see they have some of that white powdery residue on them um, which is your dried Loctite so we'll go ahead and clean the screws off as well with those alcohol prep pads when we put it back in and I'm sure it'll be Drop shutty and ready to do business when we get done there. Now, I did experience something there, which I haven't done before, but must be because of the super Loctite on that one screw there. So I'm gonna put this screw in on the opposite side here because that barrel spacer is actually spinning a little bit. So I'm gonna sink that down back on this side so I can break this one loose. Not sure the overall need for putting so much Loctite on there but it's still spinning. So let's see if we can get this locked down a little bit more. These are some of the things you'll run into. You obviously don't wanna strip things out. Um, you don't wanna damage your scale at all or anything like that. So looks like I'm starting to spin a little bit. So I'm gonna pause the video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some um, rubber tipped pliers to hold that barrel spacer and take it apart. We'll be right back. Okay, so we went ahead and got that loose. Um, as you can see, we did break it. There's a lot of Loctite in there. 
it's one of the things I'm not really impressed with. I mean, I get it. Like you don't want these screws to fall out on your customers, but I don't know. It seems like there was a lot being used on that one. So let's go ahead and get our T10 now. We'll break this pivot loose and then we'll go ahead and get it torn apart. Yeah, it's really, this pivot's really sticky. So I'm imagining there's some Loctite that got in there. Um, there's already some stuff falling out. So the pivot doesn't look like it has much Loctite on it though. So I don't know. We gotta, we gotta check and find out, but these barrel spacers should pop off now. Um, at least one of them did. It tried to make a run for it. So always good to have a parts mat. I picked this up on Amazon. Uh, it's just a silicone like electronics part mat. Kind of nice, um, very rubbery, those kind of things. I'm sure this one's stuck now because we uh, used a little extra pressure. So we'll pop it out there with our bit. And then if you've ever seen the inside of the scales, this is how they look like for the 940-1 and the 945-2 carbon fiber throughout, milled out sections, and also for your liners and axis lock. Uh, and then this one, we'll go ahead and pop out over here, the female side of the pivot. We'll see, okay, there's a little bit of little bit of Loctite in there, not much at all. So we'll see what's really going on in here. We got washers running around. I got debris falling out, so yeah, it's a little, it's a little dirty. A little dirty, as you can see, not too shabby, but we'll do the test, we'll run, uh, We'll run one of these cleaning pads through here. Now you can take these springs off and totally remove it and disassemble it, but this is as far as I need to go just to get everything clean. So we'll get one of these open. We'll see what our washers look like. These are little small phosphor bronze washers. So we'll go ahead and clean one of them up here. And a little tiny bit, as you can notice on here, that could be, but it's not overly like lubed either. So as you can see, I haven't done anything to wipe this blade. And there's really no, I mean, there's a little tiny bit of coating, but it's not like it was really heavily lubed. So it might've just been super dry. Um, not sure why the pivot was acting that way, but yeah. So we got it all nice and clean. We'll go ahead and clean off this portion around the hole. It's always good to make sure the whole area is cleaned with an H. We'll clean inside the pivot a little bit. Got a little tiny bit of debris on there, but nothing from uh, being used a whole lot, etc. This has only been used for a few days, so nothing too crazy on it, but let's go ahead and keep plugging away. We'll get this all cleaned up. We'll see how dirty this is. Not too bad at all. So overall pretty clean in there. Uh, might've been just super dry. And that's one of the reasons some of those lubricants uh, will dry up. So not sure you can see a little bit of dirt coming from the carbon fiber there or maybe it's just stuff that didn't get wiped off not sure from the carbon fiber but we'll get that all cleaned out just to make sure when we put it back together it's going to be all nice ready to go and yeah that only took one of the alcohol wipes so that's good and then now we'll just build it back together so one of the things i want to do of course you got your slick them all you want to put some stuff together you're going to put a, a little bit around obviously the hole or the pivot and this stuff like i said there'll be a link in the description but it's just it's kind of a combo of grease and lube as you can see um, a lot of you have, have got it used it um, you've seen it in my giveaways and it's just it's wonderful stuff so overall highly recommended and it's not going to dry up on you like a lot of the lubes out there are so for me that's a huge benefit. And I have I have a couple knives that when he was testing this, prototyping some of that stuff, put on um, a couple different knives, as you've seen, and it was pretty terrific. So it has still stayed in there. And that knife, those two knives are still lubed today with the same, and I've carried them a whole bunch. One of them's my favorite, Burgundy McCarty, uh, Burgundy Macarta uh, Mini Adamas. So that's kind of cool. So that's really all you need in there. A little bit on the inside, a little bit on the outside, a little bit to hold each washer on. And then let's go ahead and put one of these sides back together. And when we're doing this, obviously we're putting it back together with the T6. And I like to leave 
On these, I'll leave this liner screw here a little loose. I mean, it'll be snug, but just be a little loose just for the fact, oh, we were gonna clean all these screws off too. That's a really good idea to do. So thanks for hanging out, watching this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your process is. If you uh, disassemble your knives to clean them and lube them up, or if you only do it when there's a problem. Um, that to me is a interesting question, but you can see everything that comes off those screws. And we're gonna use the paste instead of the liquid Loctite. And of course use the blue, not the red. Um, the red is a no-no. You'll never get your stuff apart pretty much ever again without a lot of effort and a lot of work. So we'll clean these up real quick. Let's make sure we get them back to a good status and that way they're not grinding on anything when you tighten them back up and those kind of things. And like I said, usually, and from what I've experienced, you know, the paste works better, it doesn't run. So it's not gonna get into any other areas of the knife when you put it back together, those kind of things. But it works well. Uh, got that from, from the old Nick Shabazz himself from long ago for his disassembly videos. And I tried it and it works wonders. So I found that I found that on Amazon as well. You can check that out, pick up a little tube of it. Works great. These are those tedious things that, you know, while you're watching my live stream or something on Sundays at noon, you can tune in and do a little knife maintenance while you're doing it. Obviously, uh, if you're concerned about the blade, uh, painter's tape works really well. It does not leave a residue. Safety first, tape that sharp edge on your blade. But either way, you know, most of you are professionals, so you got this. You got this all. All right, so we got that taken care of. We got some dirt off those screws, some of that leftover Loctite residue, which is good to get rid of. So I'm gonna put these in together first before I Loctite it. I'll go back through once I get everything assembled and do the Loctite. Um, it's just kind of my process, how I do it. Um, you can do it right off, but if you need to take it apart for any reason or go through stuff. So this is super snug. I'll back it out just a smidge that we have a little bit of play with it when we go to reassemble. And then once we make sure the blade's straight and all that good stuff, then we'll go ahead and use the Loctite, dial it all back in. Back it out a smidge on those two liner screws. And the barrel spacer ones are pretty fun. So this is one of those, they do have a squared off portion. So they kind of drop in to the scale. So as you can see here, it hasn't sat flush. So you wanna rotate that just a little bit until it drops in there. There we go. And then now it's sitting flush in there. So I'll just hold that with my finger, making sure it's snug. And I'll put these in. I don't wanna over tighten any of these, but on these especially, you know, you wanna to toss them like that just to make sure that they bounce well on your parts mat, but that is one of the fun things. And so you can, you don't have to disassemble it this far, but I like to disassemble it this far just because I'm gonna go ahead, clean everything and for demonstration purposes. So if you have one of these tools, you can actually just take it apart. You don't need the full uh, barrel spacer removal process. And it seems like this one, this middle one's kind of the fun one. And so we may have to do a little extra work on that, but we'll leave that one a little loose for now. Um, it seems like the potential is that carbon fiber may have stretched out a little bit when we're having troubles with it. So that's one of the risks that you will take and find in disassembling your knife. So that's one of those things, you know, and there's no way to go back without getting another new scale. So this one went right in. This is the troublemaker. But once we get this other scale on, we'll get that all dialed in. We'll make sure it seats in there on that top one as well. As you can see, there's a little bit of shimmer and that's where it's moving in there. Now it's together. We'll tighten this one up. We'll get it secured in place like so. There we go. All right, then we'll get the other sides on and then we'll put that blade inside there once we get the liner screws in. One of the fun things about the 940s is the, the reassembly of them. So if you're not comfortable with it, obviously you send your knife in, Benchmade's Life Sharp Warranty. 
It is terrific. They'll take it apart. They'll clean it. And if any of those things, you know, decide they want to mess around or anything, Benchmade will go ahead and make those repairs. And if it needs a new part or something, they'll make it happen. But I think for some reason, they put a extreme amount of Loctite on this barrel spacer because it is terrible. So I would almost, I would almost call that a, a flaw because you're putting so much Loctite into one of those holes that, you know, even if they were taking it apart at the factory to clean it and go through that, it's going to be a part they're going to have to fix and replace. So it's, it's not like it's made for easy maintenance. So, you know, obviously there's still a portion of their assembly that they're like, yeah, we don't want you to take this apart whatsoever. So this is what it looks like with, you know, no blade inside there. Um, we're going to go ahead and make sure that these are a little loose just so we can get a little bit of movement out of that liner. And we'll use our flitanium pivot alignment tool to make sure we're good with that. There we go. And you'll have to, of course, pull back on this. Um, also over on OCD for DC, he makes a little set. So if you're not comfortable with pulling this back, um, it's got different little parts that he's made to fit inside there. And go ahead and hold that axis bar back for you. So that's also another great, great tool. Let's see here. So we'll go ahead and use this to fish everything through. And of course, then you can let go. This, your knife is all back together. Now you just have to put your pivot back in, put your clip back on. Um, one of the things we saw was the male side was on top, on the show side of the pivot screw, pivot screw. So we'll go ahead and do that really quick. Um, by inserting this, these do have a flat portion, like a D-shaped flat portion to the bottom pivot. Um, and so we'll go ahead and reinsert that. And we'll, we'll do that on the clip side. Um, and obviously that's something that overall it lines up with the flat portion on this pivot alignment tool right here. So you just line up your flat side like that with that. Then you should be able to just pull right back and have it go right in and go right through. But it doesn't happen every single time. So sometimes those liners, you got to give it a little push and it'll pop right out. It'll be inserted. Then we can go ahead and take our T10. We can go ahead get this put back in. We'll lock it down. I like to tighten them down all the way just to make sure that the blade is centered. Um, obviously use your finger over here to kind of keep that pivot in place. There we go, we're down, we're fully tight. Now let's go ahead and look at the centering. Centering on this one, let me look at it off camera, it is spot on. So good for Benchmade, putting this one back together. Um, it shows that all of their stuff is dialed in and symmetrical and such. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, let's go ahead and Loctite these um, right here just before we do the pocket clip. So we'll go ahead, as you can see, this is just a paste. It twists at the bottom like the glue that we all used to like in elementary school. And we'll go ahead and put a little dab in there of Loctite. That is way too much. Just enough to get a little on the threads. That's all you really need for these. And if you're gonna do the pivot, the Loctite officially takes about 24 hours or so to fully cure once it's in there. So that's something to just consider as well. And then I'll put everything back together and you'll obviously see how I would do the rest of them. I would just go through, do the same thing with every screw, including the pivot. And what we wanna go ahead and make our adjustments and see how awesome. The slick them all worked and a little cleaning. And obviously it just needed some lube big time because there was no lube in there whatsoever. Um, so, Maybe they forgot to use it when they were assembling it. I don't know. There was a really, really light, light amount of sheen that was on my finger, but not like some of the other ones that I've seen recently where, you know, you take it apart and it's it's got plenty of lube in there. So I don't know on this one. Maybe they just, they dried out. I don't know. Usually they don't dry out too much. So I'll have to do a little follow-up with my friends over at Benchmade and just see like, what the process was on these and if that's something normal to expect. It's not something normal from the ones I've taken apart before. 
Um, this barrel spacer problem was something I've experienced before. So never fun. So that's why it's always good to be careful. Go slow, use some proper tools, and we'll go ahead and adjust this pivot now and see if we get anything out. Take it out, run it down a little bit, back it out a little bit. Let's see where we're at right here. Okay, pivot's too tight. So let's go ahead. We'll get that slick them all worked in a little bit just to make sure. And all I'm doing is just pulling back with my thumb and index finger so to release that lock. So you can see even just from a little bit of slick them all, it actually is uh, swinging pretty good now. So probably just some little tiny adjustments. Look at that. I like that action right there. I don't like them too drop shutty, but I also want to be able to just close them smooth. So that's, that's pretty good right there. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, check out the links below for the tools that I was using. Um, like I said, OCD for DC makes a kit for disassembly of your favorite axis or crossbar lock knives, uh, fits many different brands. And of course the flitanium tool, the slick them all and your Loctite. Thanks for checking this one out. Leave your comments below. Let me know how you do your knife assembly normally. Most importantly, make sure to do something kind for someone. Hashtag DSKFS and have yourself a great rest of your day. Take care.